Welcome back. You're still watching the agenda. So we continue the conversation that Aldrin certainly just had with the Ukraine ambassador. We're now in conversation with Professor John Stremlau from the Witz University's International Relations Department. And we're also going to be speaking to advocate Sipo Mandula, who's researcher at the Tabombeki African Institute of Public and International Affairs at UNISA. This is about President Cyril Ramaphosa and other African leaders' uh, peace mission to Ukraine and the Russian Federation. We're joined now uh, by Professor John Stremlau. Prof Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. I think we wanted to have this conversation on Friday, certainly as we saw the mission getting stuck in Poland and many of our uh, South African representatives unable to move from the very airport uh, in Poland. Now, though, uh, the mission having come to an end, I think just initially, let's start with this. Was this a successful mission for African leaders, Prof? Professor Stremlau? Professor Stremlau, I don't know if you're on, I, I'm not, I don't know if you're able to hear me. Advocate Mandula, I'll start with you. Yes, I now hear you, I now hear you fine. Okay, great. Was this we, a successful we, mission for fine. African leaders, Prof? Was this a successful mission? Well, it did get completed. It was very brief. It was only a half day in Kiev and a half day in, uh, in Russia. And this conflict is at the very least in intractable right now because there is a Ukraine counteroffensive underway and Russia is uh, talking uh, a, a, a bold and defiant position exemplified by the moving of tactical de nuclear weapons into Belarus. So that the African peace initiative came at an awkward moment in the conflict. Uh, was there a better moment for, for this uh, mission, Advocate Mandula? I mean, let's bring you in here. One would argue that this was uh, Africans really putting their foot forward in what is a global conflict. No, correctly, and good morning to your uh, viewers again, uh, Jumbo Africa to the uh, Africa Agenda um, viewers. I think now, lady, let's look at that, the timing. It is not either the timing, but I think success of this mission was that it, there is a historical context on it, and also that the African Union was part of the mission. It was not only led by South Africa, but there were other heads of state who had an interest in resolving this global conflict. And also to understand that even if we are talking of peace, we must prepare for war. As you know, that Latin term, Prof, that passive service parabellum, it means we don't just prepare for a physical war, but it's a physical of war of words to engage as the former President Thabo Mbeki yesterday mentioned that it was important to do a contact session to understand the nature of this problem, but also that Africans have to take a lead because we know that there are even competing interest in this mediation, whether from China, from USA, from EU, from the UN, but at least in a lady we had African leaders who were able to make this mission. I agree on the time frame, but it is important that we need to acknowledge that this Africa peace mission was really a success, but at the same time, it had challenges that we are picking up in terms of Poland and also in terms of other pressing conflicts in the African continent. Well, here's here's where it gets difficult, though. My colleague Eldrin Sampia just had a conversation with the Ukraine ambassador to South Africa, Prof, and I give this one to you. And in that conversation, she made it very clear that there is still very much a, uh, an expectation that South Africa will abide to its uh, obligations of the Rome Statute and arrest of Vladimir Putin um, when he does uh, supposedly arrive in August. So, uh, I mean, what does South Africa now do, considering that it has reached out to African leaders and tried to uh, garner some peace as it continues this balancing act? It's very difficult for me to know because I was not party to the Putin Ramaphosa conversation that supposedly occurred yesterday afternoon before they flew back uh, uh, from, uh, from, from, from St. Petersburg. Uh, the, you referenced the uh, airplane on the ground in uh, which was the headline news here plane in Poland. This conflict for Poland is essential crisis. It's essential crisis for Vladimir Putin and for the Ukraine. The, the role that outside players can can play is uh, a function of whether they have got a ripe 
conflict for resolution. We all would like to have a peaceful resolution of this conflict. But at the same time, Cyril Ramaphosa has a huge domestic agenda as a democracy that he has to attend to, as, as exemplified by, by, by power, logistics, and crime. And he's under enormous pressure domestically, as is uh, Joe Biden in the U.S. domestic scene, with Donald Trump six points ahead of him, and that would change the whole equation of the foreign assistance to uh, Ukraine. So when we talk about uh, Russia or we talk about China, we're talking about autocracies that uh, are much more predictable and much more able to have consistent policies than democracies. And I think that that's lost sight of in this uh, equation of, 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 uh, of what is, is going to happen with regard to um, uh, Vladimir Putin in coming here. Uh, Cyril Ramaphosa really can't give him a reliable um, uh, opinion because, uh, I think, because uh, of the, of the uh, suits that will likely arise from the civil society groups here. Yeah, Advocate, I'm going to bring you in here, Advocate Mandula, because I think, you know, to say between a rock and a hard place certainly really is an understatement, right, in, in terms of where President Ramaphosa is and where South Africa is at, right? There's the commitment uh, to the history with Russia and certainly uh, the Rome statute that looms over South Africa. What is to be done after this peace mission by the country? Um, and, and whether or not we measure, we measure uh, its success is dependent on what South Africa does next. No, correctly, but uh, now let's also look. This ICC warrant of arrest becomes the spoiler also of this peace process. Despite that, it is a BRICS matter, and also it will be handled probably on Russia Africa summit uh, in July. And secondly, when you look at domestic challenges, yes, we have domestic challenges. All African leaders who are part of their mission, they have their own domestic challenges, but also they have looked at linking this global conflict to the African continent. How does it affect Africa in terms of food security? How does it also affect Africa's thinking? But also, as you are talking about President Ramaphosa, you will understand that he's also the chair of the African Union Peace and Security Council. So he's bringing that weight to the issue. But the issue of the ICC warrant of forest also is being misinterpreted, is being misguided in terms of us understanding our obligations. And at the same time that we never used ICC post 1994, that it would have worked for us actually after 1998. And after that, Rome statue came into, uh, into force. So for me, Sister Nala, is that the peace mission was the first take. There will be a follow-up. I don't think this was a piecemeal fashion uh, peace mission. There will be more engagement that will be needed after this first contact session that was done over this weekend. Yeah, one wonders though just uh, how much is going to be said about African nations, especially South Africa, considering that even as this peace mission uh, took off, there were serious concerns around uh, goods that were carried by uh, the uh, mission itself uh, and, and issues around undeclared armaments, for instance, that even the Ukrainian ambassador just <laughs> mentioned in conversation with uh, with Aldrin just moments ago, Prof. And I think that's seriously uh, going to be a big issue for South Africa. This is on the back of Lady R. No, it is. Uh, and and uh, there are many uh, cooks stewing and stirring in this brew. And we don't really know uh, the full story about Lady R, nor do we know how it came to pass that 120 security and police uh, would be on board when, in fact, the presidential press spokesman uh, assured uh, South Africans that uh, Ramaphosa was safe with his contingent in um, uh, that he passed through uh, Poland and on to Kiev without any incident. So uh, what what were these guys doing? <laughs> we just don't know. And and it is a, a, a distraction from what I think is rightly pointed to, which is that Africa ought to raise its concerns about this conflict, recognizing that those who are actually involved in the conflict have fundamental issues at stake, which are not comparable to what Africa's impact, the collateral damage done to Africa, which is very serious, but the, the, the protagonists are really concerned right now with who's going to win this war or who's going to um, uh, concede 
to the, a negotiating process and on what terms. And that is a real puzzle that I hope Cyril Ramaphosa, with his diplomatic skill, can be attuned to more carefully because he did play uh, in other conflicts like in Ireland a, a, an instrumental role. And of course, in South Africa, he was absolutely critical. Yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit about what this means for Brand Africa, because I think this is definitely a moment for the continent to advocate Mandula. I mean, you've got the uh, the sort of polarized views that even uh, Africa has on the matter, right? Well, you've got South Africa and Uganda seemingly uh, really more Russia aligned, seemingly, um, where Zambia and the Comores are uh, leaning more towards the West. I mean, was this an African mission that went in without even understanding itself right from the beginning? No, 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 correctly. One cannot say there are parties who are siding. I think this was a non-aligned uh, peace mission. And secondly, you'll understand that those African leaders, when they met the first week of June, they knew about this sabotage that will come from Poland, because Poland also sided with uh, Ukraine. It is a member of the NATO. So if one has to understand the sabotage, uh, of the weapons was already planned ahead of this mission. And secondly, you will understand that in the loss of war or, or in the any engagement, you need to beef up your own security. So it, it it is the same issue that African leaders, when it comes to their security detail, we have to be naked, we have to be unmasked. But when you look at European security detail, it's so confidential, it's so secretive that we don't know. And also for us to have the media contingency is the, also the, the duty to report, the duty to inform the listeners and the viewers about what is happening. Africa cannot be defined or reported by the Western media. So it is important when you look at these issues, Naledi, that it is important for the African countries and the brand Africa, as you said, I said earlier, the African Union was led by Comoros as a chair, but not to be aligned either Russia or Ukraine. Hence, even former President Habombeck once more reiterated our stance on the non-aligned uh, approach and also warning against that in this mediation, we don't need to take sides. It, 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 one has to look at win-win situation rather than looking at who will win, who will lose. Because what is at stake here is global security. What is at stake here is how do we save the succeeding generations of the Advoc world and of the African continent. Advocate Mandula, I'm going to wrap it up with this question. I bring it to both of you because I think we can certainly go on about, you know, how South Africa and Africa continues this balancing act. But essentially, August is looming and the president of Russia is set to uh, arrive in South Africa. What does South Africa do in that moment? Let's wrap it up. Advocate, I'll start with you. I don't think South Africa will arrest President Putin, and I think they will engage with the ICC as there have been uh, engagements on the ICC, how to waive for the diplomatic immunity. And I think also we are looking at that the BRICS agenda will not be all about ICC. There are many developmental issues that the BRICS countries have to engage. There's BRICS Plus uh, that will be uh, there. There's issue of the currency. There's the issue even of youth development in the BRICS. So one will look that South Africa will definitely take its legal uh, advice on how to deal with this ICC warrant of arrest. Yeah, Prof, same question for you. I can't add anything more to that, but I just would want to register the concern that sovereign equality and territorial integrity has been the bedrock of the international order. Africa is divided on this, and I can't figure out why South Africa is, is divided on the core principles of the United Nations. They can still have good relations with Russia, but they can defend the principles of the United Nations and the African Union, which is sovereignty, equality, and territorial of Ukraine. All right. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That was Professor John Stremla from the Wits University's International Relations Department, as well as Advocate Sipo Mandula, researcher at the Tabumbeki Africa School of Public and International Affairs. This is at UNISA.